morning working on the debacker saw. Now this is the original one I made for my circular mill. All this is a right angle grinder and I made a cutting head for it. But the circular mill had a quarter inch curve so I had to make an over a half inch wide cutting head. I don't need anything this heavy for, for the band saw. So I'll show you what I'm working on today. First off the disclaimer. I wish I could say this was all my idea and it's not. My old buddy Frank originally came up with the right angle grinder idea for a debarking saw and made it for his mill. And that was when I made the one for my mill and now I'm making this one. What I have here is a shaper cutter, a three sided shaper cutter with carbide tips on it. And I spun down a nut, a 5 8 nut, to fit on an angle grinder and then welded it into place. So one of the problems I have is I can't make this follow the blade without making a whole bunch of uh, odd linkages and, and such. And with this post in the way, it's very difficult. So what we're going to do is this is going to be mounted in here, down like this, and uh, it'll swing in to the log with a little spring pressure. And then it'll be adjusted by moving this down and there'll be a a mark on the uh, face here that co corresponds with the blade and a mark here that corresponds with that. And when those two line up, it will be in front of the blade. And now I've bored out a piece of inch and a half, I believe it's 3 16ths or maybe a little heavier, uh, square stock to exactly one inch. And I'll put a piece of shafting in that to be the upper arm. And then uh, I bored out an inch and five sixteenths, and I'll use this sleeve, and we'll go down through here, and this will then uh, accept the one inch. I'll put a grease fitting in it, and this is what the uh, iron will swing on. I did that with these annual cutters. These are actually made for uh, magnetic based drills, but boy, they work good in a bridge pump. They chuck up on a I think it's a three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch, well, one of these anyway, I want to call it, three-quarter inch call it, and uh, they just work great. My buddy Frank again, he owed me about a thousand dollars, so we agreed to, uh, he bought me a set of annual cutters, and they are expensive, but they are worth it. So we'll get that welded in, uh, and then, I'll, like I say, what I'll do is I'll weld it a quarter 28 nut on here, then I'll drill a hole through it and then I'll put a grease fitting in. So what we're going to do now is I want to send a one inch cutter down through and just clean this this uh, sleeve up. After welding it distorted it a little bit so the shaft will just fit. This is a really nice cutter, very expensive so I hope I don't ruin it. But here we go. Try that. Let me get it out and give it a try. Cutter's out. Didn't hurt it. You can see it's full of small shavings, which is kind of what we expected. And oh, very nice fit. Machine fit. I'll put my grease fitting right there, and we should be in good shape. All right, I got this roughed in. I put my grease fitting in there. I've got this welded in. It's nice and tight. I've got a spring simulating the spring I'll put in it. In it. Swings out, I'm going to bring it back and park it, line it up with the blade, it does miss everything in there. Well, it's kind of a rainy day here in Vermont, so I'm working on my debarking saw. I've got my stop in here so it can't drop down too far and hit the uh, angle grinder. It's a swing in, I've tried it over on there. So now what I want to do is be able to latch it. When it comes back, I'm going to put a spring on it so to hold it out, so we'll bring it in. I want it to automatically latch. So what I've done is I've I've taken an old gate latch. I had several of these sitting around. It's a spring gate latch, and I've uh, taken a three-quarter inch piece of pipe, and I basically made this into a gate latch of sorts. So I I cut a slot and a piece of round stock I had, uh, molded that on, and now it's going to just pull in like that. I'll drill a three-quarter inch hole through here, 
I'll set that down in so that when this comes back, it'll catch in. I'll, I'll drill a hole and then I'll, a small hole, and then I'll square it out with a Dremel or something so that it'll catch uh, and it'll hold it in against the spring. I got the basic swing out made. Hold the pin, swings out, latches back in, the springs are on. But it's a little heavier than I like. It's about 35 pounds, which isn't terrible. But if that came down on your head, you would think it was. So I want to put a counterweight system on it. You know, whenever you're fabricating things, one of the fun things about fabricating is overcoming problems and obstacles and uh, the challenge of doing that. That's what makes it fun. So what I want to do is put a counterweight on it, and I've attached a cable here that goes up to a pulley, over to a pulley, and down the other arm on that side. And I'm going to take a piece of, uh, I have a piece of square tubing, it's about two and a quarter ID with a half inch wall. So I figure about 12 inches of that should equal the weight of this. If it's a little uh, too heavy, I'll cut some off. If it's a little too light, well, I'll put something on it. Uh, I'm going to take the plasma torch, cut it lengthwise in half, wrap it around the post on the other side, and weld it back on. And then uh, push it. All right, I'm set up to cut the uh, tube in half with the plasma torch. I've got Breathing apparatus, safety glasses. I like to use a welding helmet semi-cut because I can see better and it's more protective than a shield. So let's give this a try. I'm going to guide. I never use a plasma torch without a guide. I'm not good enough. That could be a good answer, do you? breathing because it's still in the air. It's some pretty nasty stuff when you use a plasma torch. But look at how nice that edge is. It's almost as good as a hacksaw. All I've done is hit it with a hammer so far to remove the slag. I don't need much grinding on this. It's a little warm still. I will put those together around the tube as such and uh, weld it back together. That's hot. Nice. The debacker is done. The uh, counterweight is on. And I just wanted to show you. You can see it. It's in its uh, park position at the top. If you look over the top, you can see the relay box. There's actually a contactor in there for 110 volts. Contactor is nothing but a big relay. It's just a fancy name. So. The debarking saw plugs in to a handy box right here, so I can just unplug it and take it off if I need to. The uh, power for that comes from this relay box, and uh, that goes over to this switch controlled outlet. And the light's kind of poor here, but there's a switch controlled outlet. Here, when I say switch, I mean I can turn it off and on at the uh, control in case there's a problem. That turns everything in the head off. The actual control for that comes from a relay over in the control box that then controls the contactor when I flip a switch here. So if I just turn this into the on position and leave it.
to have control over that here. So I'm going to... Alright, I'm set up and I'm ready to try this. I'm going to uh, I'll get the debacker set. And I'm going to start the engine, start the debacker. I'll swing it into place. And uh, give this a try. All right, it's running right in the middle of the debacker cut. I'll move this out of the way. All right, the blade is running right in the middle of the debacker cut. So if there was any junk or dirt, that debacker would pull it out first. That's exactly what we want. And then, uh, when we're done with the debacker, We simply turn the handle and it goes up out of the way. And that's all there is to it. I like it. I think this is going to work great. One of the things I did was up here, this is a 7 8 bolt, short bolt with just a T handle welded onto it, colored yellow for whatever reason. I guess it's because of safety. But there's a hole drilled in here so that this bolt can screw all the way in and tighten. Now I know this can't fall down if I'm not using it or if I'm transporting it. Um, I also, when I'm not going to use it, I'm going to reach in here and just throw this switch off for safety. Now this is a uh, small right angle grinder and it runs 5 amps at 120 volts. So if your mill or whatever you're putting this on doesn't have 110 volts, but it does have a battery in it, and most mills do, you'll need, you'll need a, a bigger battery, a deep cycle battery, and about a thousand watt uh, inverter that you can hook onto that battery to make the 120 volts to run this. It doesn't take as much power as you think. Um, power, which is watts, equals as P times IE, I being uh, current and v, E being voltage. So it's 110 volts at 5 amps, that's uh, about 600 watts, so a 1000 watt inverter should handle it very nicely. And then you could use it for other things, maybe you want some, uh, I don't know, the coffee pot. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this, look out for other videos, and I would appreciate it if you subscribe. Talk to you later, thank you.